Well, here is a view of a very wide, very deep excavation. This was on the Boston Big Dig, and this used slurry walls to construct the sides of the excavation. Now, why a slurry wall here? Well, there were a couple of factors. First of all, the close proximity of adjoining structures, and most notably, this was hard up against a very, very active commuter railroad. The purpose of this excavation was to construct concrete sections of a tunnel, and the sections were individually jacked underneath this railroad. So there was absolutely no interruption to service on this very, very busy commuter railroad. Now, in order to create these concrete box sections and in order to move them around and jack them, you needed a completely unobstructed workspace. So you had to create this huge open space uh, free of any kind of bracing at all. Now that was accomplished by using only a single uh, upper level brace and it's uh, not too easy to pick it out in the drawing but here's a pipe strut, here's another one, and here's a third one. These three are joined together to form a truss, and that's the only way they can span this uh, great distance. Now, perhaps it's uh, a little easier to see that arrangement of the three of them joined together and working as a unit. So that was able to take a very, very heavy compression load at the top of the excavation. There are no additional braces. The rest of the space is open, so that requires an enormously strong wall, and that's why slurry walls were chosen. Not only is there a cage of rebar in this slurry wall, but we also introduced H-piles within the cage of rebar to give us as stiff and as strong a wall uh, possible. This is a shot inside that excavation, and because of the way the sun is falling on the wall, you can see what a slurry wall actually looks like. This is the as-cast appearance. It has this very organic kind of a look. It's not what you're used to seeing in a concrete wall, because this wall was not poured against a form. It was poured against the excavated sides of a trench. So it, it has a very a strange look to it. And there's only one thing that looks like a slurry wall. And I wanted to share that with you. It's also perfectly dry. There is some evidence of some seepage here. But that's a result of cutting a hole uh, through the wall to uh, introduce this uh, piping. The slurry wall shown here varied in height from about 90 feet to 110 feet. The wall is 4 feet thick and it was constructed in 10 foot panels. We achieved a production rate of one panel every two days, which was really excellent and presents a kind of an optimal production rate. Now, the reason we were that successful is because I began by pre-excavating a trench the full length of the slurry wall to expose any obstructions and then I backfilled with uh, clean material. By investing that time and energy we were able to have a, a trouble-free smooth production in the slurry wall itself and a good number to use, a good plug number for a slurry wall would be about $200 per square foot.